Okay, so we are live, you can start. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I guess I am supposed to say welcome uh, to this uh, afternoon's uh, webinar. I'm very pleased to do so. I am Penilla Weiss. I'm a member of the European Parliament uh, and a part of the EPP group. I come from Denmark. Uh, I come from the little uh, belt between Jutland and Funen. So being close to water has uh, been uh, all my life. And therefore I'm also as uh, being now an European politician, very happy uh, to continue my work on water, uh, being the chair of uh, the little inter uh, group, um, group of colleagues from the European Parliament uh, that are focused uh, on the water, both water uh, in terms of quality, uh, water in terms of uh, the climate challenges and the changes in our climate that uh, also is a, a challenge to our societies, either too much or too less water. But of course, also the third dimension of, of water related to uh, energy consumption. Um, and today, that is what we are focusing on, uh, also because uh, we are right now in the framework of Fit for 55, you know, this uh, toolbox of uh, directives that are being revised or directives that are being born uh, to support uh, the European Parliament and uh, the European Union uh, in how to fulfill our promises made in the Paris Agreement, but also, first and foremost, to make it possible for the union to reach our own goals set out uh, in the EU climate law that says that uh, a minimum 55% uh, of uh, CO2 reduction is to happen uh, by uh, 2030 and that in 2050, we must be a climate neutral union. So we need all tools uh, to be fit for purpose uh, to reach uh, these very important ambitions. Um, and myself, uh, I am working as the shadow on one of these very important uh, directives that are going to be uh, revised, and that is namely uh, the Energy Efficiency Directive. So I'm so, so happy that we have this uh, afternoon together working on how we can make Energy Efficiency Directive water smart because next week, hopefully, or the week after, we will see the draft uh, of the revision coming from the rapporteur, a Danish colleague from the S&D group, uh, who will put that forward. And right now, my team of advisors, together with me, are now uh, preparing our amendments of how to not only in terms of water, but especially uh, this afternoon, we are focused in harvesting as much as information and ideas uh, from you, from the audience in the chat, but also from uh, the panelists uh, that are invited to give their say on uh, what is needed to make uh, energy efficiency also to be uh, echoed through the way that we um, uh, uh, use and, and how the infrastructure, the technologies, the research and development, et cetera, et cetera, is done in the water sector. Not long ago, I, I looked a little bit on uh, the figures and I found out I'm not a mathematician and, and I'm not an engineer, but I, I, I stumbled over a, a very simple rule of thumb to understand the potential of energy efficiency in, in the water sector. And we use a lot of water in uh, the energy sector and also the energy uh, 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 the water sector uses a lot of energy. And if we very conservatively, meaning very carefully, uh, would uh, uh, energy uh, renovate our water sector in the union, we could actually get a, redu a reduction on uh, CO2 emissions and not below uh, 20 million tons because we use a lot of electricity uh, in the water sector. We use as much as it would take a little electric, ele electric car uh, to drive back and forth uh, to the moon uh, two million times every year. That is really a lot. So we need to reduce also because 
we know right now that the union uh, without uh, from our energy consumption two to three percent is used on water sector and we know that that figure will only go up because of automation, but also because the way uh, that the energy consumption is going uh, due to digitalization and electrification in our societies that will also uh, need more energy. So we need to use less of what we in the future in terms of it being either green or clean uh, will not uh, for the, the short uh, uh, horizon have enough of if we are supposed to reach our climate goals. And I think, I hope we can all agree that that is uh, what we should try to uh, do and at least uh, do it uh, in the water sector to its absolute maximum. That's all for now for the introduction, but also hopefully you can hear that I am very pleased also that there are a lot of attendees uh, to this afternoon's uh, seminar. And also I would hope that for whom, who doesn't uh, get either a, a say in, in, a, a, in a, with a question or an idea, or that you uh, in the evening uh, after this event, uh, a, a good idea or a question pops up in, in your mind, then please feel free to address that either to, uh, Dirk and his, uh, Dirk Koll and his uh, team in Water Europe or uh, me and my colleagues in the European Parliament. Our emails are always open for good ideas, uh, especially right now in the green transition. That's all for me for now. And I am therefore also very pleased to be able to say welcome to uh, the keynote speaker, uh, Claudia Canevari. I hope that I pronounce your name, uh, you smile, that is a good start. Uh, you are the head of the union, uh, unit, sorry, not head of the union. Who wouldn't like to be that in times like these? Um, no, you are head of unit uh, uh, on energy efficiency and you have now 20 minutes uh, to uh, present the, the legislative proposal uh, of the uh, energy efficiency directive and its context. And uh, we look very much forward for you to set the scene, please. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Weiss, uh, for the, the introduction. Um, and uh, uh, I'm very happy to be uh, uh, with all of you uh, today and uh, very much looking forward uh, to our discussion. Um, so, as you know, the European Green Deal is uh, uh, the plan for uh, a new growth uh, strategy to transform the EU into a fair, inclusive uh, and prosperous society with a modern, knowledge-based, uh, uh, competitive, but also resource-efficient economy. And uh, under the European Green Deal, our ambition is to make the EU climate neutral by 2050. And to meet this objective, uh, we have the binding targets of 55%, uh, uh, as Mrs. Weiss already uh, recalled. Um, that was uh, um, uh, endorsed by the EU leaders in December 2020. And since then, the Commission has been working uh, uh, on uh, uh, many, um, uh, let's say, actions, uh, namely in relation to updating uh, the existing uh, EU laws and in um, uh, adopting new ones uh, uh, in order to uh, allow for um, or to give the EU the necessary instruments uh, to reach this objective. Uh, and the Fit for 55 package that was adopted uh, partially in July 2021 and partially in December uh, 2021 brings together the relevant policy instruments uh, that can contribute uh, to this uh, uh, objective. And the idea is uh, to do so in a coherent and proportional manner among uh, the relevant regulations uh, and directives. And uh, one of these uh, proposals uh, is indeed uh, the recast uh, of the existing energy efficiency directive uh, that was adopted uh, in 2012 uh, and then revised already in 2018, uh, but that uh, should be uh, modified again in order to make it uh, fit for purpose, uh, to, to provide the necessary contribution that energy efficiency needs to bring uh, to reach the uh, 55 uh, uh, objective. 
The proposal, in fact, uh, increases uh, our ambition with a new and stronger approach for the energy efficiency targets, namely higher and binding targets for energy efficiency at EU level. It is 9% for both uh, final and primary energy consumption compared to the 2020 scenario, which corresponds to 39% and 36% uh, compared to the 27, 2007 uh, scenario. At the same time, the proposal leaves uh, national contributions uh, from uh, member states uh, as uh, indicative. But what is important is that they have to be established on the basis of a binding formula that combines criteria reflecting national circumstances, for example, energy efe efficiency, uh, sorry, energy intensity and uh, the GDP per capita. The proposal of uh, the uh, energy efficiency directive also increases uh, the annual energy savings obligation from 0.8% to 1.5%. And each member state will be able to focus on those sectors where there is the biggest energy saving potential, not least in buildings, transport and industry. A stronger role, uh, which is particularly relevant also for our discussion today, is uh, for the public sector, um, which uh, um, is uh, expected to offer uh, um, an exemplar to, to, to lead by example. And uh, the idea that the Commission uh, um, uh, has is uh, to create an obligation for the public sector to reduce energy consumption by 1.7% each year. And that will cover a wide range of public sector activities not only buildings and transport that you can imagine, but also like, for example, water uh, and ICT. And again, what is important is that uh, the proposal by the Commission allows flexibility to member states uh, to choose which public bodies and sectors uh, should be, uh, let's say, uh, uh, used to reach uh, the target. Uh, uh, and one important uh, feature is uh, certainly linked to buildings. Uh, at the same time, there are also targeted measures uh, that will help uh, alleviating uh, energy poverty and help uh, vulnerable households, for instance, by empowering consumers, uh, improving access to energy and providing financial assistance. And consumers' empowerment will be reinforced with stronger requirements uh, for information and awareness raising. Um, and there are some uh, specific, uh, um, um, this, uh, let's say, articles uh, uh, that are um, uh, devoted to um, addressing uh, energy poverty. Uh, there is also uh, quite an interesting, uh, let's say, ambition as regards uh, uh, heating and cooling, uh, where there is a revised definition of efficient uh, distinct heating and cooling and efficient cogeneration. But what I would like to uh, underline in particular is, uh, and this is last but certainly not least, uh, the new proposal introduces uh, a new dedicated article on the energy efficiency first principle to provide a legal basis for the practical application for this principle. This is a principle that has been uh, known uh, in the academic world for a long time. Uh, there is. Uh, um, um, uh, there, are, there is a provision in the governance regulation uh, for the energy efficiency first principle, but it is the first time that it is uh, strongly anchored in uh, a legislation. So the energy efficiency first principle is now recognized as a guiding principle for the EU energy policy and helps uh, to ensure a just and fair energy transition and should be taken in, into account in all sectors. So going beyond what is uh, the energy uh, sector uh, and uh, um, um, should lead to the implementation of cost effective energy efficiency solutions uh, uh, as the first alternative to other, to other measures. And uh, as regards uh, uh, the energy and the water sectors, uh, it's clear that both uh, can very much benefit from this uh, principle. So this is uh, for what is, let's say, the general framework uh, um, uh, that, con that uh, concerns uh, the energy efficiency directive uh, in the proposal that the Commission adopted uh, in uh, July 2021. Uh, now I would like to, um, let's say, be a little bit more specific about the topic uh, that we are um, uh, discussing today, about the links uh, between uh, the energy uh, and the water. And as regards, uh, starting from, uh, uh, again, the energy efficiency first principle, uh, this is uh, as regards uh, uh, the, the, the water sector. This is particularly important uh, as water, as was already uh, recalled, is used throughout the energy industry and the water system needs energy for collecting, pumping, treating and desalinizing water. 
uh, increased water and energy needs uh, or changes in water availability due to climate change uh, would have significant effects uh, on the energy systems. Thus, uh, it is crucial to establish well-targeted and concerted actions to address the use and management of energy and water resources simultaneously. And the, the water and wastewater sector accounts uh, for around 3.5% of the electricity use in the Union, and that share is expected to increase. At the same time, the energy sector is the largest consumer of water, accounting for around 44% of consumption. So it's clear that effective management of water can make a significant contribution to energy savings. And solutions to decrease the energy demand in the water sector should apply to all types of projects at all stages along the whole water treatment and supply chain and when setting the annual financial frameworks on regional and local level. And for this reason, all sectors of the economy should contribute with the public sector leading by example, as I recalled already in general terms. And this is in fact because the public sector is an important economic actor and all levels of the public administration should contribute to, um, uh, to the, the efforts because they are um, uh, together accounting for about 30% of energy consumption of all services across the EU. And to this end, uh, the new energy efficiency proposal puts an increased emphasis, as I recalled already, uh, to the public sector with a new obligation to have a 1.7% uh, reduction of energy consumption per year by every member state. And you can see, um, um, making the comparison of the figures that I mentioned on how much water contributes to energy consumption, how significant uh, the role of water management uh, uh, in the public sector could be in reaching this uh, target. And in fact, uh, uh, obviously, this uh, target could be achieved uh, across a wide range of activities uh, carried out by the public bodies. But uh, uh, it is uh, certainly important uh, uh, to use uh, to, to look into uh, the contribution that a better water management uh, could offer, uh, because uh, um, uh, according to the study, uh, water services account for about 10% of the expenditures of local authorities. Therefore, it is clear that a more efficient treatment of water processes will relieve municipalities' budgets and will allow municipalities to have, let's say, more availabilities to finance different activities. As regards uh, then uh, an important point that was already uh, recalled uh, by Mrs. Weiss uh, uh, as regards to the digital part uh, of, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, our uh, activities, um, it is also a very important part uh, because there are very strong linkages, uh, obviously, um, um, uh, as regards uh, uh, data centers uh, uh, and the energy and water sectors. And in fact, the increase the digitalization and the associated need that, uh, to capture, transfer and process process more and more data, obviously have an impact on data centers energy consumption and therefore the new proposal for the energy efficiency directive uh, introduces new elements uh, to improve the energy efficiency of data centers. And the text uh, as proposed by the Commission introduces uh, a specific obligation for the monitoring of the energy performance of data centers. Member states uh, are requested to collect and publish the data which is relevant for the energy performance and water footprint of data centers with a significant energy consumption. And if I can make some examples of elements that member states will have to collect and publish data about, there is, for example, the floor area of the data centers, the installed power, power, the annual income, sorry, incoming and outgoing data traffic, and also the water usage. And the combination of all these elements, plus many more that I haven't uh, quoted, will serve to define a common EU scheme for rating the sustainability of data centers. Uh, this is not specifically uh, already included in the proposal made by the Commission, but the Commission will adopt a delegated act in consultation with the relevant stakeholders and taking into consideration the relevant scientific and research references in order to identify uh, how to uh, calculate the sustainability of data centers. The act will define, in fact, the minimum thresholds for significant energy consumption 
and set out the key indicators and the methodology to define such indicators. So the involvement of all the stakeholders will be uh, really welcome and very important in order to come uh, to a, a definition of these uh, indicators. And clearly, as the freshwater usage in the context of the operation of the data centers uh, serves mainly cooling purposes, through the efficient and sustainable management of both water and energy, we can address both of our concerns. In fact, the water energy nexus is also something very much in our minds, in our policies, not only for energy efficiency, but also in relation to renewable energy. Already, already, in fact, with the uh, Fit for 55 package and the revision of the Renewable Energy Directive, the Commission aims uh, at a further strong increase of renewable energy um, in, in general. And this is good news, uh, not only for the climate, but also for the water use. We, we expect uh, uh, the biggest growth in electricity production to come from solar PV and wind, uh, both the technologies which are really um, uh, very much, um, um, let's say, um, uh, positive for uh, the, uh, the water footprint because they are um, uh, technologies with the lowest uh, water footprint uh, available. And uh, so the review of the legislative proposals, uh, notably the energy efficiency directive, will also help strengthening uh, all the linkages with the water related policies, for example, uh, the, the water and wastewater legislative frame framework, and notably with the drinking water directive, the urban wastewater treatment directive and the industrial emission directives. Um, in uh, um, um, just before concluding, I would like to recall that uh, uh, as part of the Fit for 55 package, also um, the proposal for the revision of the Energy Performance of Buildings Directive was adopted by the Commission in December 2021. This is indeed the second part of the Fit for 55 package. And this is also, um, uh, let's say, important because it is uh, um, in, uh, the, the idea is to improve uh, um, uh, the, the quality of buildings, uh, to increase the renovation rate, and that will also bring uh, positive results uh, in, in relation to water, um, uh, to water management. Um, the proposals uh, under the Fit for 55 package are uh, as bold uh, as they are necessary, and uh, we set out for more ambition, more action, and more investment. And I look forward to hearing your views on how to take these challenges forward. Many thanks again. Thank you so much, Claudia, uh, and also for being right to the point, uh, also using uh, the time available, very, uh, I would also allow uh, to say energy efficient. That is very much appreciated because it gives us also the best conditions uh, to ask uh, um, questions after we have heard uh, the panel uh, of uh, speakers. Uh, and um, I uh, will now uh, just run through uh, who the panelists are before I hand over the floor to the first one, which is my colleague from the Greens, Eleonora Evi. Uh, welcome to you. Uh, you are the rapporteur of the opinion uh, from ENVI, the uh, Environment and, uh, and Health Committee, where I also uh, is uh, uh, having a seat. I'm working with the EED in the ETRA, the Industry Research and Energy Committee. So I look very much forward uh, to hear what you have to say on, on this file. Also by that, knowing a little bit more about what we have to expect coming from the ENVI committee as a contribution to uh, the revision of the EED directive. So welcome to you, uh, dear Eleonora. Um, the other panelist is uh, Monica Frassoni. I hope also I uh, pronounced that name correctly. You are the president of uh, EUAs, and uh, I wouldn't uh, half past two in the night be able to explain what EUAs is. So I will now say uh, in, uh, in, in all its line, it is actually the Alliance uh, to Save Energy. So it's very timely that uh, you also take part in this uh, panel uh, today. So welcome to you, uh, Monica. Then our dear uh, Dirk Koll uh, from uh, Water Europe. Uh, you are also this time uh, not uh, hosting and facilitating, but uh, 
actually speaking your mind uh, and speaking your opinions and input from uh, the many uh, 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 very interesting uh, members and stakeholders around uh, Water Europe. So welcome to you, Dirk. And the last uh, one, and uh, not least, I'm not Birmingham, uh, president and founder of Scaleway, which is a company uh, in the data uh, sector. Uh, and also mentioned uh, by, by Claudia, yes, um, we expect the data centers and the ICT sector to take great part uh, in the green transition. And not only because we need digital solutions uh, to make the EU Green Deal work, but also because we need uh, the digitalization wave uh, to really roll over uh, EU uh, as uh, a union and, and a single market. But we also really do need digital uh, solutions in order to uh, make energy efficiency in the water sector uh, to, uh, to, 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 to become true. Um, so welcome to the panelists. And as said in the beginning, it's you first, Eleonora. Um, around five minutes, approximately. So feel free. You're welcome. Thank you very much, Pernille. Thanks a lot uh, for organizing this uh, uh, moment of exchange on this uh, very important uh, file. Uh, which is the uh, recast of the Energy Efficiency Directive. Thank, uh, thank, uh, thanks a lot uh, to uh, Ms. Canevari for the presentation from the Commission, uh, for the very good proposal that has been put on the table and where the Parliament is now start its work. And uh, as a, a rapporteur uh, for the opinion in the ENVI Committee, I will briefly, very briefly uh, present uh, my work that has been just uh, submitted to the uh, legal lawyers and translations, so not uh, st still not available, not publicly available, but will be published soon, and where we will start the uh, amendment phase and discussion phase. Um, so, um, very briefly, in on, on a general comment on energy efficiency, it's always worth to uh, re recall and reiterate and remind that energy efficiency is really our very first fuel. Um, and uh, so far has been treated not as a priority. I, I like to describe energy efficiency as a Cinderella in the story, because it's really the uh, the, 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 the very first uh, solution we should uh, deploy as much as possible. Uh, and it's not us just saying that, it's not just the Greens, it's not just uh, the EP, it's not just the European Commission, but also the International Energy Agency is telling us that we have to scaling up energy efficiency and uh, the improvements on, in this area must be really our priority in this uh, decade, which is a crucial decade in order to counter the climate, the climate crisis. And this will give us the chance to uh, meet the 1.5 uh, degree Paris goal, uh, which is uh, exactly what we have to uh, reach. Uh, but not just reaching the target, this means, uh, and applying energy efficiency first principle in particular, it means uh, bringing a lot of uh, uh, environmental health, social and economic benefits. And here uh, it is always uh, good to stress that. So coherently with the ambitious position that has already taken during, during the last revision of this directive, uh, uh, the parliament and in particular uh, the NB committee should propose to set the 2030 efficiency target at a level allowing Europe to exploit its full uh, potential, its full energy efficiency technical potential while maximizing its contribution to the achievement of the climate goal uh, um, of 1.5 degree. So therefore, in my uh, opinion, in my draft opinion, I propose to increase the overall ambition the overall target of energy efficiency to 45% compared to the uh, projections from the 27th reference scenario. Um, and, I, and I will leave to the ITRE committee to make the calculation with the new reference scenario 2020, because uh, <laughs> um, this will get some mathematics in, in and, but the, the, the uh, my uh, attempt is uh, so to increase the ambition of the overall target. But I also 
uh, want to strengthen the uh, governance uh, framework. Uh, uh, and I therefore suggested to set uh, binding national contributions but not, uh, solely, solely based on the formula that is included already in the proposal, meaning no flexibility uh, given to member states, so no discretion to member states to set the contributions as this approach has been proved to be unsuc unsuccessful uh, so far. Uh, uh, the, the, the collective uh, 2.8, uh, 3.1 percentage points gap uh, compared to the current target resulting from the sum of the national energy and climate plans is there. So um, we need to change the approach. That's why I want to reinforce the governance. Since the 2030 uh, targets are is really at our doorstep, there is no time to lose into the iterations between member states and commission in order to uh, um, to uh, to establish each member state's fair share. So that's a matter of clarity and speedness of action. Um, I uh, wanted, in my opinion, also to uh, try to reinforce the energy efficiency first principle as really this should enshrine all the um, activities, actions and measures uh, taken by member states and, my, and by uh, the um, all economic uh, players uh, in, in the EU. Uh, and uh, I also wanted to reinforce the public sector's role uh, as a driver of demand for best performing buildings, but also services and products. And uh, I wanted to uh, give an exemplar, to exemplar, exemplary role also to social infrastructures in line with the renovation strategy uh, requiring also basically private buildings provide that provide social service to uh, fulfill an annual renovation rate requirements because I think that pushing not only the public bodies, but also uh, the uh, social infrastructure is something key that we can try to achieve with this revision of the um, energy efficiency directive. Uh, now, getting more uh, precisely on the topic we are dealing today, uh, which is the one related to energy, our very first, my very first thought at the beginning, also with some suggestions by stakeholders, was to uh, create and in introduce a specifically new article on the energy, on the water energy nexus. Uh, in the end, I... Um, decided to uh, include the references of, on water uh, in all the directive, uh, in, in many parts of the directive uh, of the text. Uh, in particular, I, uh, I tried to strengthen the, uh, the consideration of uh, the link between uh, resource consumption, particular, of course, water, as we are talking today, and energy con consumption uh, within the energy audits, the energy management systems and energy performance contracting and in public procurement rules. So this is why, for example, uh, I made uh, a number of amendments uh, in the text uh, introducing uh, a specific reference to uh, water energy nexus to uh, um, basically underline the correlation between energy and water consumption in the economic uh, life because water is needed for many energy purposes uh, as we have heard already uh, today and we have to take it into consideration and this directive can play a role in this. So that's why my attempt was, uh, for example, uh, the one of uh, um, uh, uh, amending the text uh, uh, for the energy management system, introducing um, obligations also for uh, the monitoring of not only energy, but also water consumption and uh, making plans in order to uh, increase the uh, energy and water efficiency uh, um, uh, and uh, measure uh, this uh, progress uh, in the plans uh, um, uh, provided by uh, um, 
uh, uh, all the, 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 the players and the subjects that has to uh, undergo uh, the energy management system. The same is with the energy audits. We wanted to uh, include not only the uh, uh, which is the energy audit, of course, uh, is a systematic procedure with the purpose of obtaining the uh, adequate knowledge of the energy uh, consumption of a building or a group of building or an industrial or commercial operation or installation in the public or private service. We wanted to include also in the energy audits the uh, water consumption. So we managed to make these uh, kind of amendments uh, all uh, uh, over the uh, uh, the uh, text uh, the proposal and uh, of course uh, i um, made some uh, amendments also to better um, uh, uh, better outline these independent in interdependent use uh, of energy and uh, water and the increasing, increasing pressure uh, on both these two resources that we have today. Uh, the, uh, Ms. Canevar, I will, I, will, I will try to conclude. <laughs> I see you, Pernilla, to, uh, to uh, remind me that. Uh, so just concluding, uh, not only in the energy management system, not only in the water, uh, in the, sorry, in the energy audits, but I wanted also to include the specific obligation for wastewater treatment plans. This is the last point I want to mention, because they also are major energy users and account today for around 0.8 of all the electricity used in Europe. So uh, there is the need and there is a substantial potential to improve their uh, energy efficiency. And uh, um, uh, yet, because of course, their nature um, uh, may be limited to, uh, uh, to uh, market pressures for them to do so. So they they won't be so they won't be so that much uh, pressure to do these uh, uh, action of energy efficiency. So their inclusion in the scope of the audit obligation uh, will add uh, a, a contribution uh, to to energy efficiency and also uh, water uh, efficiency. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Eleonora. Um, we have a tendency to develop uh, a way of talking without the, uh, any pause at all as uh, politicians. So I was trying to find an opening, but I, I didn't manage. Sorry for that, but it was also very welcome what you had on your heart. So thank you, Eleonora, for this. And now I will hand over the floor to uh, Monica uh, Frasoni. Uh, from EUA's the Alliance uh, to Save Energy. Please, the floor is yours for five, eight minutes, and then I begin to do something about it. Don't worry, I will be I will be uh, shorter than eight minutes or seven because Eleonora already mentioned uh, the whole beginning of the uh, of the conversation, and so I don't need to repeat the points that uh, she made on the first fuel. And you also underline some data on how important it is to put together um, to put together water and energy. And actually, uh, very recently, uh, the EIA uh, suggested and recommended that water and energy should be systematically considered together. This is a new thing. This is a new element. Uh, when we started to work on the energy and water nexus, um, there was uh, uh, some kind of uh, uh, I wouldn't say surprise, but let's say it was a new issue that would come, uh, come in. And I think uh, that it is very important that now um, there is a sort of cross attention between the different sectors and that you uh, in the Parliament and in the Commission are ready to legislate uh, together on the two points. Because uh, as you very well explained, and I don't need to repeat, the two are very, uh, are very, um, are very connected. And uh, of course, the counting on how much energy you, you consume is also very much related to how much water you consume or you need. And therefore, these are points and elements that should be taken together also in the legislation. Another point that uh, I wanted to, uh, Eleonora mentioned, uh, mentioned uh, the question of the audits. I think that this issue of the audits uh, is very, very important. It has been important in the past. Not all member states, I'm talking about the audits on, on energy efficiency, have been particularly excellent in, uh, in using them. And above all, 
the question of the of the audits, be it in water and in energy, um, is something that uh, basically is there, but it is not really always used in order to change things, really. And I believe that this is another challenge that uh, is there for uh, for uh, for both the sectors and. Uh, because this is, of course, all related to the fact that uh, one of the major drawbacks or the major, let's say, holes in the um, energy efficiency legislation in the European Union and also in national, in national uh, governments, in national states, at all levels, actually, is the evaluation. How much is the energy that you actually are sparing? And how can I make sure that what you are saying is actually happening? I remember in some time, and probably my compatriots Claudia and Eleonora will remember, that there was a time in which the simple fact of announcing that you will change the light bulbs will, you know, would say that, would, would determine that you calculate a certain energy that will be saved. And this is certainly no more possible, not in energy and, uh, and, uh, and, not, and, not, and not in, uh, um, not in, uh, um, in, uh, in water issues. Um, so I also would like to underline a couple of other occasion, uh, uh, issues, if you allow me, um, which are also related to the big point of transparency. Um, transparency uh, of, uh, of, uh, of data is, is very important also to make good audits and to be able to calculate, as I said earlier, how much uh, progress you, uh, you are doing. In this moment, the available data and statistics do not allow for those calculations. So I think that this is something that has to be taken into, into account by the legislator. And I think that, as Eleonora said, and by the way, good wishes to her, because uh, her, uh, um, her opinion is very, very ambitious. So I hope that, uh, that the parliament will, uh, will support uh, and, they, and the, the ITRE committee will also be supportive. Um, so um, the the issue you, you mentioned uh, quickly the point of uh, of digitalization. We are convinced that uh, in the industry and water sector, the there is a huge benefit from digital system and data, and data analytics. Um, indeed, in order to reduce above all water inefficiency, um, the there is not a lot of discussion about these points at least yet. Um, in, and exactly as Eleonora said, uh, the, the, uh, the energy efficiencies in general are sort of Cinderella, but I also believe that the knowledge of how much water is needed for data center, for example, and for our digital revolution is something that it is a sort of well-hidden secret that, is not, uh, that should not be kept in order to make sure that this kind of legislation are, are, are actually um, uh, implemented. Uh, also, because we must say it, you know, solutions, technologies are already there. It's not that we have to invent the wheel. It's something that we need to apply and that the, in order to apply it better, at least in the area of energy efficiency, we really need uh, a good legislation. Um, the, the, another point that I want to make, and it will be my last one, um, the, uh, as I said, standards for the exchange of data, I want to insist on this point because it's really important, uh, are needed to ensure the uh, cooperation across administrative level and therefore uh, a sort of holistic management about water. I think that the new ED will be very important in this term because it, it tries to put together certain, uh, uh, the, the different sectors, but above all, it calls for the administrations to actually increase of a certain level their, le their level of efficiency and the fact that you can you know govern together in a, in a in a united management this kind of consumption is really important and i think it will be really visible uh, if they will be decide to do it for for public administrations um last one last point I, I i want to do is i want to say is that uh, um, it is about the, the management of consumption and resources at national level in the energy efficiency as well as in, in general in the, in the energy sectors, but it's, it's the same thing also in water. We know that uh, the water directives, all of them, are among the worst um, pieces of legislation in terms of, of, of implementation in the European Union, um, actually need to be controlled and need to be well-defined at national level. 
Um, this is actually one of the weakest points of the energy efficiency directive. There are no really, uh, you know, commitments that have to be taken of obligation at national level. And therefore, I think that in the other, in some of the other uh, directives, like the wastewater um, and uh, should we and, and the and the urban water treatment directive, <laughs> we should actually uh, we should actually try to introduce this uh, this element of data transparency and uh, uh, and standards, uh, because otherwise we are not going to be able to be coherent, let's say, in putting together these two very, very important parts uh, of our life and of the energy system, I would say. Energy and resource system. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Monica. You were very uh, time efficient uh, and, uh, and putting uh, additional very uh, strong points uh, to what was uh, already said by uh, Claudia and uh, Eleonora. Uh, but also thank you for mentioning the Urban Wastewater uh, Framework Directive because that's a part of what we are also looking at at the moment in the ITRA committee where to address uh, the issues regarding water because there is a kind of a tradition or a, 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 a historical curriculum uh, on the water uh, framework uh, uh, legislative package where energy efficiency is, is some kind of a newcomer. So how can we also do it in a way that the, the right directives work with the right topics and that, that there is a, some kind of a coherency uh, in between those. Uh, right now we have a very big chance to talk about energy consumption in the framework of decarbonization and we must not miss that opportunity. I agree to that. So, Duk, now it's your turn to take- uh, after, after, see the, after the ladies. After yeah, yeah. all these ladies. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the new world order. Uh, Dirk, please. Yes. Uh, and, and here it is uh, age before. No, I wouldn't say. Uh, uh, Dirk, you have the floor. <laughs> Sorry, Arno, but you, you look a little younger than Dirk, at least. Thank you. Okay. So um, uh, thank you all. Um, as you know, uh, what Europe uh, stands for. Uh, an innovative water sector where we're trying to achieve what we call a European water smart society, which for us is a society in which the true value of water is recognized and realized. All available water sources are managed in such a way that water scarcity and pollution of water resources um, are avoided. Uh, water and resource loops are largely closed to foster a circular economy and optimal resource efficiency. I think that's a, a, for us a, a very important uh, asset here. And then also, of course, the, the water system should be resilient against the impacts of climate change events, and all relevant stakeholders should be involved in the management of our water system. Now, in order to get there, we've identified four innovation areas, which are all about, which we've called multiple waters, which are all about reuse and recycling, and quality fit for purpose. Digital water, which is all, all about optimal uh, resource management and allocation exploiting and capturing the value in water, particularly here, uh, I would say the energy which is contained in wastewater and an underpinning hybrid gray green infrastructure. Now, in, to, in order to achieve this, of course, it's important and uh, it, it's, come, it's come up already a number of times that water is not a standalone topic, but water you almost say, suffers, I would say, from the in interdependencies that it has uh, with many other different sectors and policy fields. Yeah. And for a long time, I would say um, these interdependencies have been very much underappreciated. And I must really congratulate uh, all three of the ladies before me, Claudia Cannavari, um, Eleonora Evi, and Monica Frassoni for both their, I would say, good awareness and deep knowledge of the interdependencies between water and energy, because I think that is uh, really a very present surprise. So I will not repeat <laughs> many of the, of the st statistics and figures uh, that have already been outlined, but instead um, I would like to add uh, a, few new ele a few additional elements uh, beyond, I would say, the existing interdependencies, which is that, for example, um, the decarbonization of uh, our economy uh, and of, of the energy sector 
probably will rely on uh, water demanding energy technologies. So that's something which we really have to take into account. And also that um, it is estimated that by 2030, there will be a 56% discrepancy between water uh, use and demand. Yeah. Uh, and that particular fact, yeah, I think is also very important in the context of, of our strategic economy, strategic autonomy as a European Union in terms of our um, energy production. Yeah. Um, with that as a background, um, there are a few things that we as Water Europe will be, I would say, closely following up and closely anal an analyzing uh, the current proposal, which is, of course, I would say, the good integration and, uh, and application of the energy uh, efficiency principle to the water energy nexus. I think it's very important, but has already also uh, been managed a few times. Then of course, also already mentioned uh, the application of sustainability parameters with regard to the digital sector and data sectors. I think also very important. And then also um, uh, already mentioned the urban wastewater treatment directive. I think it's very important, also very much linked to our concept of exploiting and capturing the value in water. So taking the energy uh, out of the existing wastewater with the objective and linked also to the urban wastewater treatment directive of coming to energy neutral or even po energy positive urban wastewater treatment plans that we on one hand make, make sure that the en energy grid is flexible enough uh, to allow uh, uh, urban wastewater treatment plans to deliver energy to the grid, uh, not only from, I would say, the energy that it takes out of the wastewater, but also the opportunities it may have, for example, to install uh, photovoltaics on its storage, on its water storage basins. Um, that uh, ha having said that, um, I'm very glad also, um, and that's uh, also direct um, uh, comment to Ms. Frassoni that uh, Water Europe has established a very close collabor constructive collaboration with EUAs on this topic, and we we hope to be. Uh, I would say to strengthen that collaboration. Um, a last point that I would like to mention, which has not yet been mentioned is of course, I mean, we've heard, heard about the link uh, with the urban wastewater directive, a directive which has not be yet been mentioned though. I think we also need to closely uh, look into is the link with the uh, industrial emissions directive. Yeah. Um, and with that, I would like to conclude my uh, contribution. I think I uh, I stayed within the, the parameters of five to eight minutes. Thank you. Very professional. Thank you, Dirk. Um, and also uh, strong to have the point uh, that you uh, raised uh, in, uh, in the last section. So thank you for that. And now we go from uh, uh, one man to another. We are very uh, inclusive uh, as long as we are a majority of uh, women. No, joking. Uh, it's the best who must speak. And I look very much forward to hear uh, Arno de Birmingham, what you can uh, tell us. Uh, but also maybe hopefully you can start by telling a little bit uh, on, on uh, who, uh, who you are and your company uh, uh, from Scaleway. Um, thank you, your, the floor is yours. And may I say, uh, before you start, please, Dear audience, do use the chat, uh, making uh, hopefully some uh, uh, important questions, uh, but maybe also some of the suggestions that uh, the, the great panel uh, together with uh, Claudia not have yet uh, uh, touched upon. Uh, it's uh, your chance now, so please do so. Uh, write it in the chat and we take it after Arno has had the floor. You're welcome. So thank you very much for the invitation. So I'm Arnaud Dangam and the founder of Scaleway. We are a cloud service provider located in Europe, in Paris. And we operate since uh, 16 years. Um, and we are going from the data center to the software. So we have a very large scope. And we know this industry by heart since a long time, since uh, 1999. So uh, it's a long time right now. Uh, I would like to explain why uh, water usage in the data center industry is a topic. First of all, it's a massive water consumption industry. Uh, I will give you some few numbers and few examples to understand why it's a topic. A single data center can use the equivalent of a small city 
and require the significant amount of water for cooling. For example, a 15 megawatts data center, which is a middle to high size data center, use 360,000 gallons of water every single day in the US. So that's massive. In 2014, a total of 626 billions of liters of water has been used in the US just for the data center. A medium-sized data center, something like 15 megawatts, use as much water as the average of size of a hospital or uh, something like a big golf. <laughs> so yes, it's massive. And from the limited numbers we can get from internet or from different reports, uh, more than a half of this water coming directly from drinking water source, wasting billions and billions of cubic meters of water every year just for nothing. Um, the, second, um, the second topic is there is um, lack of transparency. Uh, most of the time, water consumption is considered to be a trade secret by most of the data center operator. Less than a third of data center operator measure the water consumption and communicate on it. Less than a third. Third, the water usage is really a dead angle of the data center and, uh, energy, energy sorry, efficiency calculation. Since more than two decades, uh, th there is not a lot of number about all this industry, and we really have to take care of it. But there is a lot of good news because technology do exist to reduce to near zero the water consumption of data center without increasing the electricity bill. And technology exists since a long time. We use all this technology since 20 years now, and um, we don't need any water to cool down our data center. And uh, we have been very conservative, and there is a, really a lack of innovation in this industry. And we need a regulation at the EU level to challenge all these statu quo. So what do we expect from the EED? Um, for me, the transparency should not be optional. It's very important to empower the already existing EU code of conduct, the European code of conduct, sorry, which has been uh, not as impactful as expected. Uh, the operator should be registered on the European code of conduct, and uh, this sh it should be mandatory to give all the number, uh, including power uh, usage, water consumption, and everything directly to the European code of conduct for any data center above one megawatt. To, be, to bring clarity to the clients and to raise their awareness about the environmental impact uh, of their IT policy, uh, this directive should even pave the way toward the elaboration of an energetic score for the data center. We talked about it just previously, Simil similarly to the neutrinal score for the food. Um, sorry, even if it is true that small data centers are less efficient, the, U, the UE should really have a look on the largest infrastructure. Uh, for example, we have a few big projects here in France. One data center project uh, will consume the equivalent of uh, half a nuclear power plant. So this is completely, this is very, very massive. And uh, we still use uh, a lot of cooling tower and use a lot of water for such data center. It's like no sense in 2022. Water usage also trigger uh, some risk. Um, I don't know if you know this risk, but um, cooling water uh, have a risk of a bacteria, uh, the Legionella risk. Um, so such risk uh, should not be there in Europe because we don't need cooling tower in Europe. We, we are not in a very warm uh, era and we don't need uh, cooling tower. Um, the risk of Legionella, most of data center use a lot of chemical product to not have this bacteria, uh, especially chlorine and bromine, who cause pollution and acid rain. Um, so public authorities need to be aware of that and to monitor such practice because um, it's use a lot of water. Uh, there is a risk of Legionella and we use chemical, very dangerous chemical to avoid this risk. About the current proposal, I have a few words to say. About the waste management, uh, the waste heat management, there is no one size fit all solution because we produce a very low temperature uh, heat. So it's very hard to transport it. It's very hard to uh, reuse it. 
Uh, there is some indicators um, for the reporting you propose that are uh, even not possible to do uh, because it's not an, our responsibility regarding, for example, uh, the amount of stored data or proceed data. Most of time it's our client's responsibility, not the data center owner responsibility. So you have to take care because this requirement is uh, somewhat impossible. Thank you very much for listening. I hope I uh, succeed to keep the five to six minutes and I will be very pleased to answer to all your questions if you need. Thank you so much, Anu. Yes, you really did uh, hit uh, the needle uh, a couple of times and very interesting to hear about your uh, company and experience so far. I would like to ask uh, the panelists and uh, Claudia if you have some questions uh, to each other before uh, we take, at least there is one uh, question coming up uh, from the chat at the moment. Um, but before that, maybe uh, Monica, do you have uh, a question to uh, maybe uh, one of the two gentlemen? Because uh, you did hear what Claudia said and you also uh, uh, reflected uh, on some of the prisms uh, of that. Uh, but do you have a uh, uh, maybe also a, a, a teasing uh, question uh, for the two gentlemen. And uh, for those of you who didn't uh, not uh, so far uh, follow uh, the chat, uh, there is a greeting from uh, Eleonora that she had to leave uh, the panel. So she sends her regards and wishes all a fruitful uh, Q&A session now until we end at six. So, Monica, do you have something for Actually, me? Actually, Mrs. Weiss, I actually have a question to you, oh. uh, if I may. <laughs> yes, you're welcome. <laughs> and also to Claudia. Um, well, first of all, let me say that I am very glad of this uh, collaboration that we were able to establish with Water Europe. I think it's very important uh, because, as I said earlier, this connection was not always uh, uh, logical or seen. Uh, on the other hand, I must say that it was a very quick, the European Parliament and the Commission were very quick in taking it. So we are, we, are, uh, we are okay with that. So my question would be, how many chances we have in the current Parliament to, 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 the current parliament to um, actually deliver on, on this point? Do you think that there, are, there is a majority around it or not? Mm. Or there will be? <laughs> That's a very good question. Uh, um, we still have uh, months to go before we have a plenary vote uh, on the revision, as you know. Um, but I sense that there is uh, a great opportunity for the revision of this directive, the Energy Efficiency Directive, to be really innovative. Also because I, I shouldn't jinx it. Uh, but there are other revisions and there are other uh, uh, new directives uh, being made in the Fit for 55 that are more difficult <laughs> um, to deal with. Uh, also because of the Inca linkages uh, in between uh, them, uh, CBAM, ETS, uh, et cetera, et cetera, Lulu uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and there is so much logic into uh, the energy efficiency where the principle of energy efficiency first, yes, we have said that over and over and over again, and now we really want to make that work. And um, we shouldn't uh, embrace the fact that the energy prices are rising, but it is also a creating a kind of a, a hot plate for us to handle at the moment that we really realize how important it is to not use more energy that we really need to do. Uh, but also that there are in terms of the data centers uh, that we are talking about today and may also make a little announcement about Friday, there will be another online meeting with Digital Europe on the data centers that there is a great opportunity uh, to work on both data and water and energy um, uh, together. Uh, so I to answer very uh, briefly on your question, yes, I think there is a good opportunity to, to see that the end result of the revision will be very uh, both um, ambitious as set forward by the commission, but, and, 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 and that's the easy part of policy. I mean, uh, it's not difficult to, to raise uh, ambitions uh, 
by speaking them out loud. What is more important is to work with the toolbox of uh, how are the incentives, what are this, uh, the, the, uh, the, the financial uh, uh, in stringers, uh, in incentives um, in, uh, in the instrument toolbox. That is the crucial part of that. But I, 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 I sense a good uh, spirit uh, and will uh, to make energy efficiency really rock uh, the European Green Deal. Yeah, and the, the, the question actually also uh, went over to Claudia as I heard it. So Claudia, do, can you echo? I mean, I, I, I think you could echo the hope that I have, uh, the reality when it hits uh, uh, the boat uh, later on in the negotiations, then uh, we might uh, have some tension rising. Thank and Claudia you. is holding the member state. XC, yeah. That's, that's a good topic, yes, yes. Yeah, no, is, uh, I mean, uh, clearly uh, um, uh, the Commission has put forward an ambition proposal and uh, um, uh, we hope that uh, uh, the ambition will be at least maintained, obviously. So, uh, um, you know, that our role is really to try to facilitate uh, uh, the agreement uh, between yes. the co-legislators. Yes. So we will do yeah. our best to make sure that... Uh, <laughs> Um, let's say the result is very good for um, you know for energy yes. um, and uh, for for the for the for really the fair transition. So because yeah. I mean as you were saying, uh, uh, energy efficiency is key also in relation to energy prices. And probably if we had been collectively done more, you know, like starting from ten years ago, the, the, the situation at the moment might might be uh, might have been uh, uh, better in terms of the, uh, exactly. the impacts on energy prices. So. Exactly, exactly. It, it wasn't a trick question to you to see if the Commission was more ambitious, and <laughs> I know that. Uh, but you you are you are very rightly uh, say that also uh, the, the the missing link in this conversation is of course member states. And that is also why I, 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 I appreciate what Eleanor was saying, but also that I heard you were saying in your uh, uh, introduction, Claudia, that flexibility for the member states in order to do what works for them is very, very, very important because it doesn't make sense to discuss whether energy efficiency makes sense or not, but you have to take into account uh, the context. Um, and also do it in a way that where uh, all stakeholders uh, uh, keep up this good spirit and, and will to cooperate and, and, and make the, the connections in between the different uh, 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 initiatives to be taken on board. And that's where also we as parliamentarians have a great role to play in order to facilitate say the best practices and cost efficient solutions to be put forward. But also what I heard from you saying I know that we still need some more research and development um, that could actually also be a call to the Horizon Europe uh, friends uh, and, and also that uh, the EED is linked uh, to, uh, to the ESRO committee that is responsible for the research uh, uh, budget uh, in the European Parliament. So there are some interlinkages uh, also in that. Now, I would like to announce that we have two questions. Mm -hmm. And I read up from my phone, so uh, excuse me for not being that uh, very elegant in, in doing that uh, in front of the camera. But we have now a question here uh, asking, are there currently any general water energy intensity benchmarks, paragraphs, for example, um, uh, a cubic meter per kilowatt hour? Racks closed for industrial sector, uh, or is the data currently being reported uh, adequately? Uh, is the question. You are smiling, Arno. Is that because uh, you have uh, uh, a bidding? Uh, on, yes. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> Please. We, are, we already have an, an indicator in the data center business, in the, in the data center industry, sorry, it's the WUE, water usage efficiency. It's the number of liters of water per kilowatts per hour used. Um, so we work a lot in order um, that this indicator is used by the whole industry. And uh, because it's not normalized right now, it's still in, at the ISO for normalization since a long time, since more than 10 years. And we expect uh, all the data center industry to use it 
as soon as possible because it's a very interesting uh, water intensity uh, usage indicator. Thank That's you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. Dirk, uh, you look like uh, a man who also has uh, some input on this weird art. Am I misinterpreting your body language? Then you have to... Need to unmute. No, no, I was just listening with a lot of interest to, to Arnaud, actually, and make, making Perfect. notes there because this was new to me. So that's... Uh, Perfect. Perfect. Uh, asking for innovation and actually contributing with innovation. Thank you so much, Arno. Uh, the second question uh, coming up from the chat is, is there energy audit included? Is the energy audit including uh, the energy issues related to AI supercomputing uh, used by water sector? We are also uh, right now in the parliament working on the uh, uh, AI directive. Um, so that's a relevant question coming up from Sweden, from uh, a senior research at RISE Research Institute of Sweden. Hum, is the energy audit including the energy issues related to AI? I'm looking at you again, Arno, or maybe you, Claudia. Hmm, hmm. I wouldn't know what to say. I could ask the same question. I'm more into the certification issues related to AI. I mean, AI is smart. I mean, don't we also need uh, artificial intelligence to make water smart solutions work for energy efficiency? I know that wasn't the question, but that could also maybe make sense. No one can actually answer your question uh, 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 Abdelkhada uh, Merouluf, sorry, but uh, let's see if we can work on that uh, after this meeting. Let me then have a look again in the chat. <laughs> there is a question coming from Richard uh, Elman. Uh, in order to uh, fully integrate water within energy strategies, would it be feasible for municipalities to incorporate water within their strategic energy action plans. Claudia and Monica, is it a yes question or a yes answer to that? Mm -hmm. And what would for me definitely yes, this would be a real game changer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I would I agree. Know. That would certainly be uh, be very very useful because I mean I, I mentioned how much uh, municipalities are um, yes. consuming in terms of water and how much this costs. So obviously um, that would certainly provide a very useful information and then op hopefully actions. Mm -hmm. I guess there will be some stakeholders from the other municipalities also watching uh, this uh, panel debate. Uh, so I look forward also to him. Watching maybe. and being very worried. Because Sorry? I don't think that there will be watching and being very worried because mm -hmm. I think that there are a lot of local municipalities that are looking at this uh, kind of obligation with a lot of worry. And one of the points that we as stakeholders uh, should do um, mm. also to help the legislators to, to find an, an, ambitious, um, an ambitious solution. Yeah. Um, an ambitious legislation is, is actually to accompany and to make sure that this thing is considered to be feasible, not to complicate it under a bureaucratic or even a technological or a financial point of view. Uh, and that is really a challenge because uh, we saw that this is definitely one of the the core of editors said that uh, among the worst implemented projects is exactly the ones on energy efficiency. So mm. I think that probably this is not the case in water. I don't know, but uh, but I believe that this is a real challenge in order to make people understand that these new obligations go exactly in the direction of making their life easier. Exactly, exactly. And that's where the arguments on, on both the uh, better, better regulation, better lawmaking and, and, and sense making and of course cost efficiency because if you as also as a municipality can see that by the end of the day you are saving uh, taxpayers monies and also the way that you work with water uh, also contributes to the solidity of, uh, of your uh, municipality. Uh, that is arguments that of course needs to be put forward. Um, 
you yeah, were maybe you saying something, uh, Dirk. Yeah, if you allow me, there is a there is a question from in the audience on which I would like to build a, ah. an additional question. Yeah, there is a question from Niels van den Berg or Bergen. I can't see the full name. Which is, um, are you also looking into opportunities to monitor the water footprint of European companies in African and Asian countries? Or will the proposed auditing will be limited to water use in the EU? Uh, what I would like to add to that, of course, I mean, if we are monitoring, yeah, um, I would say energy and water efficiency for production, uh, for European production, yeah, that can, of course, create um, a competitive disadvantage compared to productions that take place outside the European Union. Is that something we will take into account, for example, in, um, in trade agreements. Hmm. 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 I think that is directed to Claudia. Oh. I mean, Claudia, uh, the, the, thank you, thank you. No, it's uh, just that uh, the, the directive obviously applies uh, to um, uh, EU member states. Uh, so, um, and the, the, the companies that are bound uh, to um, uh, apply either uh, energy audits uh, or energy management system, systems uh, are uh, European uh, uh, companies, a uh, company based in, in the EU. Um, there was also in, in the past uh, uh, the issue about uh, companies spread uh, uh, throughout the world, uh, how this will account for, and obviously it would be quite a big, uh, um, uh, quite, quite big in terms of, uh, um, let's say, monitoring and administrative burden. Uh, but uh, I mean, energy efficiency is uh, an issue of uh, um, uh, that, that the Commission is uh, uh, um, uh, um, using, or no, what is covering in, in international cooperation. So we have uh, uh, cooperation with, with various uh, uh, third countries as regards energy efficiency. And uh, I mean, it's not linked to Africa, but is linked to our neighbors uh, um, in the energy community, for example. Um, uh, and this is a, a very important cooperation that the, EU, e, that the Union has uh, um, uh, with the countries uh, um, like, for example, uh, Serbia or Montenegro, uh, Ukraine, uh, as within the energy community. And the energy community is uh, taking up the EU a key. Um, um, so this is, uh, you know, a way of uh, bringing uh, um, uh, energy efficiency forward um, uh, in, in in other areas uh, still of the of the European continent, but you know, going uh, towards uh, uh, towards the uh, the Eurasian uh, part uh, of uh, of the continent. Uh, but as I said, uh, it's indeed energy efficiency is uh, is uh, definitely one of the uh, main uh, aspects uh, for international cooperation. Mm. Thank you, Claudia, and thank you for, for the question uh, to the panelists, Nils. Um, I have a question for you, Arno, uh, not more of maybe hmm, uh, a, a nerdy one or an, a blonde one, it can go both ways, but what are the existing methods to avoid cooling towers uh, in data centers? Is that actually a possibility? And yeah, how? it's a possibility. Of course, it's a possibility. Uh, we use since ever uh, what we call dry cooling to cool down the data center we don't need any water we just use a dry cooler and we don't need any uh, uh, tower to do to do that it's very easy it's worked very well uh, especially in europe because we have not a very warm climate uh, it will not be the same uh, in the middle of the desert or in the us that's for sure but uh, this solution exists since heaven Okay, thank you. Uh, and uh, answering that also gave uh, time for Dirk Hallett uh, to ask, I think it will be the last question of this session uh, and the rest will then be uh, by sending emails. Um, uh, Dirk, you, uh, you ask, do we have insight how the renovation cost of buildings would evolve when we uh, combine uh, the water and energy efficiency first principle. Um, ED, uh, for example, what if uh, a subsidy for uh, circular uh, shower systems uh, would support uh, the energy transition because people need less uh, expensive heat pumps and a smaller hot water storage tank, thereby making the complete sustainability of their homes more feasible. So do we have that insight on how the renovation cost of buildings would evolve 
when we combine uh, the water and energy efficiency first? Maybe it's that question for you, Claudia, coming from the commission side. Do you see it in the chat? It's, it's, uh, it's a pretty long one. We skip that one in terms of the time because there's another one for you, uh, Claudia. Uh, do the commission, uh, uh, is the commission thinking about establishing an open access database on water consumption of different technologies and sectors to make energy water modeling feasible? Real data accessibility is very poor at the moment uh, and most of the present models rely on US data or use some estimations. That's a good question to end this session on. Claudia, the floor is yours. And maybe also if you would like to say two or three lines as a wrap up uh, from being together with us, uh, that would be very helpful and appreciated. And then also Monica, Dirk and Arno, you can be ready to, to close uh, your participation with a short note before we end in nine minutes. Claudia. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Mrs. Weiss, uh, for, for giving me the floor. Um, as regards the question, I must admit that uh, I would need to check with my colleagues uh, um, in DG environment responsible for uh, water management. Uh, I don't have this information. It is uh, certainly very interesting. Uh, so uh, maybe in the exchanges afterwards on uh, with by emails, uh, we could uh, try. We could uh, um, look into it and and uh, find uh, the the correct uh, reply. And the same goes, uh, in fact, uh, to um, to the question about uh, uh, the uh, urban wastewater treatment plants uh, uh, and what could be done in order to um, um, let's say to collect uh, uh, water. Um, um, uh, water from the water sewage um, uh, and so on. Um, so as regards uh, the, the, the wrapping up, uh, I would say that it was really a very interesting uh, uh, session. I'm very happy that that was organized. Um, I think that it underlined uh, once more the importance of uh, um, uh, the nexus between uh, uh, energy and uh, water. Um, and uh, uh, indeed, when uh, Monica was uh, saying uh, that they were raising the point, or she was raising the point uh, some time ago, that was really pioneering uh, a very important uh, uh, issue. And uh, uh, I think that this uh, should be um, uh, more and more in our radar screen. Uh, and so we will be very uh, interested uh, in the Commission in seeing uh, uh, um, uh, possible amendments uh, to this uh, end uh, in uh, in the um, uh, uh, report uh, that will be prepared uh, uh, on the recast of the energy efficiency directive. Uh, but certainly from our side, we've been looking into these uh, uh, more and more. Of course, uh, uh, it's uh, a slightly new area, but very promising and very important. Uh, uh, so um, um, indeed, uh, um, many thanks again for having organized uh, such an important session. Thank you. And thank you for taking your time together with us this afternoon. It was very, very appreciated, uh, Claudia. And a good idea to go come back with the uh, uh, bulletproof answers to, to the last very complex uh, and, and but also very relevant uh, questions. Thank you so much. Monica? Yeah, I just wanted to underline um, the fact that uh, through this kind of connection, actually enhance both agendas. And um, this is a very important uh, element of the Green Deal and is also a very important element of the description of, uh, let's say, new energy system that is wider than the one that was there before. So it is not only a question of saying, yes, there is a lot of water wasted in energy, but it's also really a kind of a common design of how the, the next... Uh, the next energy system should be. And uh, I think also that, uh, as Eleonora said earlier, the, the energy efficiency is a sort of Cinderella in the debate. And I believe that uh, there is a lot of sensitivity on water issues on the contrary. And I think that the both questions can, uh, can really uh, become even more important uh, in the agenda of the Green Deal because we know that legislation is important, but public awareness is also very important. And the way in which we do, and which you do, the, the, the legislation will have a major impact also at national level, which today is really um, not particularly, I, mean, I would say, um, not always receptive at the right level. So, because 
So I think that that the, the connection of the two agendas is uh, is really key in this uh, in this moment. And also to have this cross legislation, the water legislation which takes up energy issues, and the energy legislation which takes uh, uh, water questions. Thank you, and thank you very much for the invitation and uh, for this very interesting panel. I I hope it will not be the last. <laughs> it was a pleasure having you, Monica. Thank you so much. Uh, instead of uh, ending with you, Arnaud, uh, I think you should take the floor next and then Dirk, also be in respect uh, to your role uh, as, as leader of, of uh, Water Europe, uh, I think you should have the closing remarks from the panel. Arnaud, please. Uh, I would like to thank you very much for your invitation and uh, congrats to the EU institution for tackling the complex issue of the water usage in the data center industry. Uh, we really need a smart and maybe a bold regulation to drive um, evolution in our sector. And uh, please uh, feel free to exchange with me. If you need at any time, you can add me on LinkedIn or Twitter or any, any way to communicate with me if you, if you need. Thank you again for the invitation. Thank you so much, Arno. Uh, please keep an eye out of uh, what uh, Water Europe and, and MIP Water Group uh, makes in the future, because we try to, to step up of, uh, on uh, various uh, topics related to European Green Deal. And we cannot uh, uh, reiterate energy efficiency first uh, too much. Uh, we really need to push that agenda. So you are very welcome to, to join us again uh, next time. Dirk, this was a very, very good afternoon in the history of uh, Water Europe and, and MIP Water. I hope you agree with me on that. So, what else do you absolutely. have on your heart? Absolutely. No, 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 no. Uh, to be honest, um, um, I think we covered a lot of territory, really, mm -hmm. really. And I've been very, as already stated, I'm very impressed by the awareness and the knowledge of all the stakeholders involved really about um, the, the the water energy nexus. Uh, mm -hmm. One point I, I think I raised, which was not raised by the others, is the link with the industrial emissions directive. And I think there, although of course it's not part of the remit of the EED itself, I think we need to see mm -hmm. um, whether we can include, uh, I would say, aspects of uh, water efficiency in existing breaths or create a, a horizontal breath on, on water efficiency. But of, that's, I would say, part of the debate for another for another revision of another directive. Mm. Um, and to be honest, I look forward very much to collaborate um, with the stakeholders here and particularly with um, EUAs, but also with Scaleway to see if we have, still can find opportunities and possibilities to further improve the proposal for the uh, recast of the uh, EED. Hmm. With that, back thank to you. Thank you so much, Dirk. Um, also mentioning what is uh, uh, relevant, um, you could say, umbrellas to uh, to open uh, over this topic here. I would also like to just raise awareness to the fact that in the European Parliament, also in the ITRA. Uh, Rishi, uh, there is an open report on the industrial strategy of EU, and it would be very, very appreciated also if uh, stakeholders within uh, um, uh, uh, the uh, nexus of water and energy that you raise awareness of what are the important, uh, more horizontal principles uh, for how to make also the industrial strategy of the union really uplifting uh, of the competitiveness uh, of our SMEs, but also in especially the SMEs who are the, the kind of the backbone of a lot of other SMEs working in uh, either the energy sector, the water sector or the data sector. That would be very, very appreciated. I have nothing else to say than to echo the smiles I see on the face of the panelists uh, and on also Claudia, thank you so much for uh, um, uh, taking us very uh, uh, wisely through uh, the very complex of, of the Energy Efficiency Directive, who is an old lady in the house uh, that now is going to be renovated herself uh, in a way that uh, she can be, uh, it can be, uh, one of the main catchers by which we really push uh, the union 
uh, towards uh, completing the EU Green Deal and actually also in a way where we make it as a growth strategy. It was announced like that, that the way that we do the, the green transition and actually is how we make our economy grow and grow more healthy. So uh, I was also very pleased to hear that many of the good ideas coming forward was something that was applicable uh, and to both municipalities and the different sectors in our very broad ranged uh, uh, SME uh, uh, communities around the union. Thank you all uh, participants uh, on the screen, but um, most also actually to the participants uh, sitting in your offices, on your, hopefully not on your bike, uh, or uh, um, uh, sitting online and following uh, this, um, uh, this event. It was very much appreciated that, that so many of you really wanted to hear what we were talking about. Uh, please take our invitation to send us an email. If you have an idea or a question, please do so. Uh, we welcome that very much in a good spirit for the Green Deal. Take care, everybody, and uh, see you next time. Bye. Thank you, and, uh, bye, -bye. Thank you very much, Benia. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.